your game will need menus. Now menus can come in many different shapes and sizes. In fact, that's very wrong. Menus pretty much come in one shape and size, but their purpose can differ wildly. It could be a main menu, a post screen, could be a shop, could be an inventory system, could be whatever your game needs. But your, your menu itself is gonna be the same display size as your actual game, which by default will probably be 1920, 1080 HD. Make sure you're in pixels, Always make sure you're in pixels. Um, yeah, 1920, 1080. Or you could just go to film and video and get HDTV and select that one. Doesn't matter per se. And then we're gonna hit create and we can see our display size. Now, in terms of actually making the menus themselves, most menus are made up basically two parts really is part one is gonna be your background so you're going to have your background image and then the next part is going to be your buttons so adding the interaction to your buttons now in unreal we can make simple buttons do you know um that are basically just sort of rectangles do you show do you know the area that you could click on that would do the thing and you can change the color and do a little bit with that but they're not very fancy and they're not that advanced so ideally you want unique original flashy sort of buttons and actually coming up with unique original flashy buttons can be quite a tricky thing in of itself a creative process um but those buttons you know have a bit of play try and come up with a unique design with this menu i went i tried to go for something that was universal and what i mean by that is it uses uh iconography or metaphors visual metaphors we can see by looking at this that this is a two-player mode, one-player mode, or settings. We're very universally accepting of the cog, meaning settings. There's lots of different um, visual metaphors, such as like a floppy disk for save. And just this is just how we understand this, and I could release this game in whatever country I wanted, and everyone could sort of visually understand it. I wouldn't have to care about localization. Whereas this system, you'd have to translate this in French and German and Italian, all those of a languages um, so like I say your background which is going to be your 1920 by 1080 and I'll just throw a quick disgusting gradient down there you go that's my background okay that's too shocking let's just do a two color gradient there you go that's my background um, and these lines here, these are actually called safety lines. It's something that comes from film and TV where not all displays display the same image. So the idea is that you're not supposed to put text or anything useful outside of these areas. So if we have the game name, Let's go 105. That, you know, we sort of snap it into the corner. Now, Photoshop's really good for snapping, but Unreal itself doesn't actually have any snapping systems. So try and do as much as you can in this. Now, when it comes to actually the making of your buttons, let's do a, a custom shape. We'll just have stars. Make these on new les. I'm just gonna hold shift. And let's give this a a more yellow fill because it's a star just doing a very quick rough job with this just so you get the idea oops And once you're happy with everything, I would hide your buttons and save this itself. Now you can save this as really you want to save it. I'll probably go for either a JPEG or a PNG. Um, it doesn't matter because it's not got any transparency. But JPEG usually is a smaller file type. However, when it comes to saving your buttons, that's actually bad. Let's just put it there. When it comes to saving your buttons, I would recommend firstly crop it down. B 
because any extra space, any, even if it's blank space, is wasted memory or wasted file size. And we're all about optimization when it comes to this. And then you want to save file, save as. And this you will want to save as a PNG because it contains alpha information. When I say alpha information, I mean this checkerboard at the back, that would mean it's transparent. So when we put it into our game, it comes through transparent. Now, another thing to consider, and that's quite easy to do, is custom fonts. Make your game look unique. I just put generic font there, but why have generic font when you can have a nice font? So I usually use Google fonts because they're open source, like they're free license. You don't need to worry about any of that stuff. And just sort of scroll through until you find a font that's going to suit your game. Like, no, not that one. Um, wait, I said not that one, like I'm actually making the game. So once you've found your font, we can just go ahead and hit download and download those and import them, do whatever you want with them. So with our background saved and with our font saved, now inside Unreal, we can, I've already got all widgets folder here, so I'm just going to import it into there. I could import my images and I could import my font. So would you like to use this font as this? Yes, yes to all. Cool, import my font. Now, when I create my user interface, so right click and space, create user interface, blueprint widget, main menu, and let's go widget. And let's open that up. At this point, this is where you would drag and drop your image in. Um, I didn't have an image to import in, but so I'll just drag a generic image in. And scale this up so it covers my screen. What you'd probably want to do actually is just use 00, 1920, 1080. So it's all actually the correct scale. And then if you wanted to start adding text to this, if you didn't do the text all in Photoshop, which you should do the text all in Photoshop, just import it as an image. But if you didn't, we can click and change this font. So we'll call this game name. And then we would import your button. You know what, let's actually just save the button for display purposes. Just doing a very quick rough job of this. In fact, no, let's do a better job of this. You know, that is fine, it's fine. So file, save as, save as the PNG button. Um, I'll put this in my downloads because I'm going to delete it after. Okay, now back in here, we can import my button. And we can just, in fact, let's not, let's actually create a button first. So we're going to drag a button into our game. And then what we need to do with this button selected is on style, normal, drag and drop that in. Now the thing you'll notice is it looks weird. And that's because we need to know the actual size of the image. So if we go back to our show, image size is 400 by 368. So. 400 by 368. There we go. Now it's the correct size. And you probably want to go through, you can have different ones. So this is what it looks like normally. If you were hovering your mouse over it, you could have a, a slightly different version. So I'll just do a quick um, hue and saturation. It won't let me, bear with me a sec, let me merge these image adjustments. So let's say we were hovering over it. We can make it a bit darker. And then we could save that as an image and we'd have that. And then we could even do a pressed version of it, which 
if we were doing a pressed version, what I'd probably do is add a bevel. So, you know, we can use the bevel to try and make it look um, like, you know, it's sort of being pressed down. Maybe put it on a slightly different angle. Anyway, you could play with that and do whatever you want to with that. Um, the main part that you want to do is when it's pressed, let's add a, a key to this. So when this is pressed, we want to open level. Now, at the moment, it says open level. We don't have a level name. Let's quickly create a level. This level here is called third person example map. Gosh darn it, that's third person example map. Third person example map. We're going to compile and save that. Um, all done. Let's quickly create a new level. So file, new level. It can be blank. Save as selected. All right, now we've got a new level. Let's open our level blueprint. Unbegin play. Create widget. And it's called main menu. Add to viewport. Um, let's give, when I press save there, it asks me to name my level. So I'm going to call it main menu. And then finally, last thing I need to do is in my project settings, I'm going to click on settings, project settings. And then go to maps and modes. And then it says game default map and edit start map. So when the game starts, what map do you actually want it to open with? And I'm going to start open with main menu. So the one I just created. So now when I export the game and press play, that's the map it will start with. And that's going to look like this. I'm going to press F11 to go full screen on it. And so we can see it looks like that, but if you don't press F11 and you just do it in viewport, you can see it's actually wider than 16 by 9, so it doesn't actually work properly. But anyway, if I click this, I've not got a hovered version. It opens up the level. Cool. Done. Um, but for your artists, for you artists out there, the main thing you're going to want to focus on is the actual making of the main menu and create something that looks cool. Like I say, add some custom fonts, make the whole thing look nice. Don't just go for basic buttons. Think about um, all your graphical skills, you know, using your rule of thirds, which is what I tried to do in this one. Um, think about trying to use visual metaphors and um, getting a nice layout for your menu. Have a look at how other people have made menus and get some inspiration. But that's pretty much it. All right, thanks for your time.